Good morning, everyone. Hope you guys are all doing well. We're doing well out here. We are starting a brand new project that I'm super excited about. Um, and I'll give you kind of a little history of how this really came about. Um, you guys know that I'm a big Gary Vee fan. Uh, went to 4Ds uh, a few months ago, or actually last summer, and uh, met so many great people there along with Gary. I've met Gary a few times, but um, how this came about was actually a contact that I met through there. Someone that works at the Sasha Group who puts on the 4Ds, uh, a good friend of mine named Arjun, uh, contacted me, I don't know, about a month ago, and he introduced me to a guy named Jake Miller who is uh, works in conjunction with Vayner Sports, who is run, and Vayner Sports is a, kind of a subsidiary, another company that's owned by the Vaynerchucks. Uh, AJ runs Vayner Sports, AJ Vaynerchuk, Gary's little brother. Anyway, long story short, uh, Jake um, has a client, a friend of his that he does a lot of work for, that's an NFL player named Josh Martin. Josh Martin has played for a lot of different teams, playing currently, he He's uh, signed with the New Orleans Saints, but he was a Jets player as well. He's been a Kansas City Chiefs player. So this is a, a picture of Josh. And um, a few days ago, Josh and Jake and I got on a conference call together, and uh, Josh needs me to make something for him. So I agreed to do that. We kind of worked out the, the terms and the details, and I'm super excited to do it. So if you guys, oh yeah, here's another picture of Josh, which is really cool. I saw this on his website is joshmartin95.com. So go check out his, uh, his website. He's got a really cool website. He's doing some, oh yeah and this is uh him and gary and it's actually got my sign right behind him it just i found this on his website pretty cool but anyway go check out his website he's starting a new podcast and the signs that i'm making for him are going to be up on his wall behind him while he's doing his youtube videos and his podcast he's got a youtube channel podcast he and you know as a and i think he's he's represented 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 by Vayner Sports as well. So um, I'm super excited to do this uh, project for him. He's got a couple different things that I'm gonna do. But first one is he wants this logo. This is his, kind of his brand, his logo, JM, and he wants that behind him. And we talked about all kinds of details on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it a kind of a version of what I did for the Sasha sign. This was back on 430 is when I uh, did this, uh, uh, signed for Sasha Group, uh, James Orsini over there at the Sasha Group. So I'm going to make kind of a version of that, but it's going to be uh, two foot tall. In fact, I've already got uh, some stuff put together for it. So um, I just wanted to kind of start this off that way. And then when we come back, I'll show you kind of what my plan is. Been thinking about it for a week or two what my plan is and how I want to put this together. So uh, stick with us and we'll get this done. All right, folks, so let's move on with this thing. So here's their logo that uh, we're going to do, Josh Martin's logo. And uh, what, my, what I did on the Sasha sign is I used 3 quarter inch MDF, and then I cut all the way through it with a router. I'm going to do the same kind of thing here. Um, but uh, as far as getting a logo, I just cut the pieces with my laser, and I laid them out my normal layout process. And this piece of uh, MDF is actually two pieces of half inch that I glued together and it sat overnight. I just used regular uh, good tight bond glue and it sat overnight. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my uh, star bond uh, glue down process. I'm going to use my medium star bond. Again, you know me, I love the star bond stuff. So I've got both pieces. This I'm using a little piece of um, fiberboard here. It's only quarter inch, but this is going to be my sacrifice piece because I got to cut all the way through my MDF. So what I'm going to do here is um, I'm just going to put some star bond on this thing. And this stuff holds so well that I'm just trying to get mostly of most of it covered we've got two really big pieces so I don't think I need to cover this thing you know a hundred percent I think 
that's going to be enough for me to hold oh, everything that's down. That's so strong. Huh? I can smell it that way over here. Oh, yeah, it's pretty strong stuff. So then I'm going to use my accelerator. I'm going to put that on my other piece. And I put my, uh, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing there. So I'm going to put my accelerator on here. And hopefully this works out. I've got it set where it should be just in the right spot. And I'll put some pressure on it. <laughs> I could get up there and sit down, but you don't want to see that side of me. <laughs> so I, we're going to let that set for a few minutes, and then we're going to come back and we're going to start cutting. All right, so a um, couple things I want to mention here first. First of all, uh, this is a full one inch thick because of my two and a half inch pieces. So I would normally never try and make anything more than a half inch for sure with this router all in one cut but I'm gonna make this in three cuts three separate cuts so I'm taking it a little bit at a time a third of an inch at a time basically um, secondly this is a lot of straight lines uh, if you're not used to using your router in this particular fashion um, and you're not comfortable with it just don't do it me and honestly with all these straight lines I could do a lot of this with a jigsaw with a scroll saw, even with the, the uh, radial arm saw, even the, the table saw, because it's so many straight lines, a lot of it I could do with that. I'm just a router guy, so I want to show you what's possible with a router, but I'm not in any sense telling you you need to do it this way. I'm probably doing it the hard way as compared to somebody that's good with a, uh, with a bandsaw. This literally could all be bandsawed no doubt about it. Um, I'm just doing it with a router and again it's probably the harder way to do it but um, I like to challenge myself with a router and that's what I'm comfortable with but this is very dangerous especially when I get it out to where it's a full one inch uh, this is spiral up cut bit when it's a full one inch out um, it's pretty dangerous so you really want to if you're not comfortable with it then then don't even try it and hopefully um, I'll get through this with all my appendages and uh, <laughs> we'll see what we can do. Secondly, this is MDF. I ha there have been a t that has been one time in the past where when I was cutting this stuff for a prolonged period of time, it literally made me sick. I was sick as a dog for a while. Vicki will attest to that. Uh, so definitely, definitely wear uh, your mask, your respirator when you're doing this and you know many of you wear respirators all the time anyway and that's great me I don't wear one very often but in this particular instance that's exactly what I'm gonna do thank you and Vicki's got one on too that's exactly right all right I know it looks silly all right here we go which bit are you using this is the spiral up cut, and I'm set, I don't know, something over a quarter of an inch, probably about three sixteenths deep. Three sixteenths, five sixteenths deep. Yeah, I'm way over a quarter of an inch. Yeah, I'm probably three eighths deep, probably about three eighths deep. Here we go.
guys. Well, you can see that I I stayed way away from the line there. I just wanted to make a, a kind of a rough cut. Um, and then what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish up these two lines here. And then I'm going to finish up the first cut, the rough cut, all the way around the big one. Then when we get ready for, the, and then what I'll do is I'll go back and I will uh, try and just kind of clean that edge up and get it closer to the line. Um, and then I'll come back for the second cut and come back on camera. So I'll do the rest of that, the rest of this cut uh, and the rest of the first cut on here and then uh, go back and clean it up. And I'll actually, I'll do the cleanup a little bit um, on camera there too. So we'll be right back. Wow, it's bright out here. Okay, so now guys, so I've done my first cut, my first rough cut all the way around. Didn't take me hardly any time at all. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, on these lines here that I cut before, I'm still at the same depth. And what I'm gonna do is, is get that much closer to the line and it won't kick out near as much sawdust. So you'll probably be able to see better and I'll probably be able to see better. Let me explain this, guys. So if you look at that line now, maybe if you can kind of zoom down in on there, it's a lot closer than over here. I do that for two different reasons. Number one, uh, I want to get close to that line so I don't have too much uh, sanding and touch up once I get it all completely cut out. Number two, I and the reason I rough that out away from the line is I want a, a a groove that's wider than a quarter of an inch because remembering that my spiral upcut bit is only three quarters of an inch uh, long the flute and I'm gonna cut a full one inch here but by the time I get to the bottom I won't be cutting the top but it will that full quarter of an inch shaft will have a big groove that it can ride in without burning I hope that makes sense but basically I'm, I'm taking it in multiple cuts, so the three-quarter inch groove is, is good enough um, to go as deep as I want to, or at least this one inch, but the full quarter inch shaft, I want a, a, a wider than a quarter of an inch groove for that thing to ride in by the time it gets all the way down to the bottom. Anyway, all right, so I'm going to do what I did there, I'm going to do it for the rest, and then we're going to come back and we'll cut the next pass. folks it is time to get these things cut out so I've done multiple passes on all these I've 
cleaned them up all the way around for the passes that I've made. So now I've set my bit, um, I don't even know how deep that is, but it's gotta be a little over one inch. Yeah, it's just slightly over one inch, so it'll cut clear through. Hopefully that the tape, I know the tape in the star bond is still gonna hold, even though I haven't cut on it for a day, but I know it's gonna hold just fine. So I'm gonna cut this one out and then we'll, uh, we'll see how it looks. So again, we're cutting, <laughs> we're cutting MDF. So we're definitely gonna use the mask. Headphones. Huh? Yeah, and ears. The longer this bit, the longer this bit comes out of the router, the first two cuts didn't make a lot of noise, but the longer this bit, or the deeper that this bit goes, and I'm gonna be cutting now at the bottom, oh, three eighths of an inch, it's gonna cause more chatter. Means it's gonna be much louder probably twice as loud. So I'm wearing ear protection. Vicky's got ear protection on and uh, we're both wearing masks. So let's get this done. Okay, so let me tell you why I stopped. I heard something that didn't sound right as I as I reached through as I cut through here. It something didn't sound right. So what I want to do is I want to check my depth and see if number one if the bit slipped because again the more no, it, it still looks like it's about right. But what I want to do now, just to make sure, first of all, I'm going to unplug it, just to make sure, again, the more stress that you put on this bit, the more vibration, the louder it is, what you absolutely want to make sure of, and this is not planned at all, but what you want to make sure of is that bit is absolutely tight in there. So I'm going to grab my wrench. I'm going to make absolutely sure that that bit is tight. So there I just loosened it. That loosened a little bit too easy. So. All right. That now is tight and I know it's not going to slip. So. Still, I've still got lots of length in, here inside of the the, um, the actual collar, so I don't have any worries about that. Um, if you if you tend to push it too hard, it could snap that bit. I've had that happen before, not recently, but I've had that happen before. So you just you just definitely want to take precautions. Don't try to rush this thing when you're cutting something like this. You got to take your time. All right. Let's try this again.
Let's see if that thing will pop off of there. Uh, probably will work. So, because that's just a rough cut, I could go back and trim it up right where it's at. But I think because there's so many sharp edges on it, I think I can do it mostly with a sander. Star bond just held terrific. So now all I got to do really is just peel off that tape. This star bond um, masking tape idea really was a game changer for me for holding stuff down. Really works well. I think I stole the idea from somebody else. It's not original to me, but I can't remember who it was right now. But there it is. So you can see it's 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 still rough, but I'm going to be able to I'm going to be able to just sand most of those. The only the tough one is going to be in here. Sorry, I'm all over the place. I'm sorry. So I need to I still need to trim that up, but uh, I'll be able to sand all those edges down, get them all down flush, and uh, that'll be my first piece. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to do the same thing on the big M uh, off camera. And then when we come back, we'll, uh, I'll have all of these dressed up. Again, I'll probably use the, uh, my big belt sander disc just to, just to clean all that stuff up. It'd be pretty easy to do with all these uh, flat edges. And then we come back, uh, we'll, uh, we'll move on to the next step. So we'll be back. All right, folks, so I've got them all cut out. I've got them uh, nice, clean edges. These in here were a little tricky, a lot of hand sanding, but then I, I trimmed a little bit of it up uh, that was off. Uh, I just did it by hand with that long spiral upcut bit, um, mostly on the inside of the J in here where it was kind of kind of rough, but I just did the kind of did it by hand and then I sanded them all down got pretty good edges on there so now what I'm going to do is what I did on here just put a real slight chamfer on it so this is uh, the face of it and, and this is uh, again I did this not too long ago this is where I think these little uh, cordless routers really work out well so I'm just going to use a bit 45 yeah oh yeah I'm sorry so that's on my 45 degree chamfer bit with a 3 8 bearing on it and we'll just put a real quick uh, chamfer on that. All right. So now what we're going to do, we got the edge all done there. Now what we're going to do is we're, we are going to put some uh, black primer on these. Because we're going to uh, actually... Because we're actually going to coat these with black resin, uh, it's uh, putting this primer, especially on the edges... Let me put that out of the way. Especially on the edges, really helps to uh, to seal it up. So I've done some kind of some practice pieces, and I'm going to put probably four or five coats of primer. on this thing because I really want it sealed up good on the edges, especially. The cool thing is the wind's blowing, it's a nice warm day, so I'll probably get four or five coats of primer on these things in within an hour or so. So as soon as we got them all primed, we'll move this uh, party inside and uh, we'll pour some epoxy resin, black. Anyway, we'll be back. Hey folks, 
Well, guess what? We ran out of time again. This video is going way long, so I'm going to have to chop this up into two different videos. So on the next video, which you guys will see, I think on Wednesday, uh, is actually pouring that, uh, that resin and uh, getting that J and that M all done. And then I'm doing another little sign besides that. And you'll see that with any luck at all. You'll see that on Wednesday as well. Uh, so uh, thanks again for watching so much. We so appreciate it. We know lots of you are going through some really hard times and we just appreciate you sticking with us. Uh, we're all in it together and we're going to get through this thing. But um, again, we so appreciate all of the support you watching. Uh, if you need supplies, there's the website. If you haven't subscribed yet, we'd love for you to subscribe. Click that little bell icon. Give us likes and shares and all, you know, the whole rundown. So anyway, thanks so much, guys. We love you and we'll see you on Wednesday. Bye-bye.